seated. This Thursday morning, I poured out my cup of coffee and opened the shades and looked out on the pond. The mist was rising and the sun was coming up and the birds were flying and I even saw a butterfly, the first monarch of the year, went fly by my window. And I opened up the app called Sacred Space and began my time with God. The second section of it read Freedom. And I kind of groaned because it was not always one of my least favorite of the meditation. But this time, it let me see, and it was talking about the things that we have done to keep ourselves in bondage. And the freedom was talking about how we bind ourselves. And at that moment, these scriptures that we had this week came into full view. You see, Abram was sent away from where he lived from his family and his home and his community because if he had stayed there, he would have spent his time working and paying attention to his family and not listening to God who was taking him away to become the father and a blessing to all of mankind through his descendants. Abraham would have lost his focus, and his focus would not have been on God. In the letter to Paul, of Paul to, the, to the Romans, we have the same message coming through yet again. He's telling us we can't rely on salvation through obedience to the law, law or through good works. Again, we're focusing on the wrong thing. We are keeping ourselves bound down and not being free to let the spirit roam. And so we come to Mr. Nicodemus. Now, Mr. Nicodemus is a Pharisee, and his job, his life, was the law. He woke up in the morning doing law. He went to bed at night. According to the law, He every step he took had something to do with it. He obeyed it to its absolute minute point. And if there was not a if he kept found something that was not covered by it, he got together with other San, the members of the Sanhedrin and they figured out one. The problem, and so they, he and his uh, and the rest of the Sanhedrin were really pretty, I think, confused, puzzled, upset, at least taken back by the fact that there's this young rabbi that wanders that comes into the temple and starts throwing over tables in the midst of the Passover and says, my house, my father's house, is to be a house of prayer. It's not to be a den of thieves, a marketplace. I think something kind of disturbed Nicodemus in the midst of that, and he ended up showing up on Jesus' doorstep one night And he says, we know that you are a man of God, because what you do, you can't do without God. But really, who are you? <laughs> so, this conversation starts. Now Nicodemus, yet Jesus says to me, what Nicodemus, I'm sorry, backwards, let's go back a little bit. Okay, um, at that particular point, Jesus Christ starts to tell him, tells him that he needs to be born anew. Nicodemus says, how can that be? I can't be born anew. I'm an old man. I can't come out of my mother's womb again. Or better yet, somebody else suggested, maybe he just said, I can't be anybody else who, than I, who I am. And Jesus said, okay, rewind this. Let's try this again. We are going to go this way. You can't be born. You have to be born of water and spirit. You have to get rid. Wash yourself of this world. And receive the spirit. 
so that you can have that relationship with God, you can see the kingdom that's there. You see, Nicodemus was bound by the law. His, that was his focus, and he thought it was enough. It was enough. He did not have a relationship with God. He had a relationship with the law. And Jesus was trying to open his eyes to see. It was all consuming and it found him there. And so Nicodemus went back out into the night, probably home pondering this, and his heart may be a little like Mary. But you see, Nicodemus doesn't stand alone. He's with all the rest. We're all right there with him, and I certainly am guilty of it. It's a lot easier for me to stand in the way of traditions or habits or rituals or to make some little box up to keep me from doing something or make me do something. And my focus is not on God or on what the Spirit is telling me to do or that relationship because... God is all about relationships. He's a relate to his, his life. He gives us this triangle of relationship between us and God and each other. And that's what he wants us to see. But we keep blocking it by putting up more and more types of jail cells. On Sunday mornings, we're studying a book called a New Kind of Christianity. And it discusses how the church is going to have to change. Christianity will change in the 21st century. I'm not too sure that we really need to change so much as we need to go back to the beginning. See, if God's all about, all about that, we're, we have to look, what, and what we're looking at and what we're seeing are all of the little boxes, all of the prisons all of the chains that we have down through the years put together. Different types of theology, different ways of reading Bible, <coughs> different ways of looking at Jesus. And quite frequently in the course of doing that, we forget that we are to be in relationship with God and a relationship with our brothers and sisters, all of his children here on earth. On Wednesday night, another set of things that keep us bound. We're studying about forgiveness. And this, son, this last Wednesday, for those that didn't have a chance to be there, I think was at least exciting for me, because we saw the prodigal son in a different light. We saw the father and the son and the story of forgiveness that goes there that we're all very, very used to. But in the asking of the questions, what we found out was that the younger son had grievances against his father and his brother, and the brother had grievances against the father and his brother, and the father had grievances against both of his children. All of them stood in need of forgiveness, and all of them needed to forgive. It was this huge web of forgiveness that needed to happen so that the world, so that this whole family could live in freedom with each other and not in fear or kept feeling like they're being judged. And that story was really amazing to me because it made me remember and it comes to our final words of the gospel today. You see, God so loved his wor the world that he gave so that everyone who believes in, G in his son may not perish but have everlasting life. Indeed, he did not send his world son into the world to condemn the world, to give us more chains, he came in order that we might be saved through him and free. Free as a spirit that Jesus is talking about, that winds, that the wind that swirls around us, the spirit that runs through us, the spirit that is over us and around us all of the time. So 
I ask you, since this is Lent, to take some time to see what's binding you from your relationships with God. I know I am. <laughs>